Okay. Already in last lecture or last two three lectures, we are working with function. Already we have checked simple function without passing any parameter and without returning any value. In next lecture we will discuss passing value to the function. The value which we pass from the main program, it is called an actual parameter, and the value which refer into the function that is a parameter, which is called as a formal parameter. Then we have learned concept returning value from a function. Then we have learned both the concept combined, that is passing the value and returning the value. And then in last lecture we have discussed that how to create multiple functions and those functions we are calling from main program. The number of values the, or you can say the number of actual parameters and number of formal parameters must be same. Number of actual parameters and number of formal parameters must be same with their data type. And if you are returning value then you have to receive value. The variable whose value you are returning and the variable in which you are receiving the value data type of both must be same. Up to this stage already we have learned. The variables of main program and the variables of function or you can say variables of function and variables of calling program they don't have any relation with each other. Those are considered as a local variables. So we have three concepts remaining in a function that is function call within function, recursive function and then local and global parameter. Recursive function we will check afterwards. After a few days we will go for a recursion. So today we will be covering function call within function and local and global parameters and what is the difference between local and global parameters. And from tomorrow onwards we will be starting with array topic. So here, this program, it receives value of x and n and it returns x less to n. This function receives value of n, it calculates n factorial and it returns n factorial. In main program, we are reading value of x and n and we want to print x raised to n divided by n factorial. In between, we have taken one more function which is called as a calculate. We have one function called as a calculate. So, from main program, we are calling function calculate. And to that function calculate, we are passing value of x and n. We are passing value of x and n. Just a minute. Here, okay. So here we are calling calculate function. So it goes to execute calculate. This calculate function receives two values, so we are passing two values x and n. Then here it executes the function for the implementation and return value of answer. This value of answer is given back to ANS. Okay. This type of ANS is float, so we are writing here float. And this type of the type of this variable also float. So your function is receiving two values 
and it is both value of type integer and it is returning one value of type float. So in main program, we are reading value of x and n. Then we are calling the function to calculate x raised to n divided by n factorial, and then we are printing the result. Now, if you check the calculate function, in calculate function, the first two statements are declaration. The next statement is p equal to power n bracket x comma n. Power is nothing but name of a function, so it goes to execute name of the function. So when this statement is executed, it goes to execute this power function and it passes to value of x and n. This value of x and n, which he has received, which this function is received from a main program. So it passes value of x and n. This x and n comes here. It will execute this program, return p. This p, it returns value to the calling program. Now, which is the calling program? This power is called from calculate. So this value of p is given back to calculate function. Then f equal to factorial. So from calculate function, it goes to execute your factorial function. It is passing value of n. Where it is? Okay. Here it passes value of n. That n is taken here. It will execute this and return f. This value of n, the value of f is written to the calling program. Which is the calling program? This calculate is the calling program. So it take it into the f. Then it will calculate answer. And then return answer. This answer will be given back to this answer. So here now we are calling first, we are executing first main program. We are executing main. From a main, we are calling calculate. From calculate, we are calling power. So when power returns, it comes back to the calculate itself. It won't go to the main program. Your function always returns to the calling program. Then it calculates factorial. And when it returns from factorial, it comes back to the calculate. And then it completes the calculate. And from calculate, now it comes back to the main program. So here, your compiler, it will start executing from the main program. Then from main program, it goes to function calculate. From function calculate, it goes to the power. From power, it comes back to the calculate because function always returns to the calling program. Then it goes to execute factorial. It completes the factorial. Then it comes back to the calculate. It completes the calculate and then it comes back to the calling program. This power and factorial, they are called from calculate. So when your return statement is executed, they will go to the calculate. They won't go to the main program directly. They will go to the calculate function. So this concept is called as a calling function from a function, which you can say a nested function call. We can call function from a function. Now in this case, the most important part is main program is calling calculate member function, which is present before the main program, which is present before the main program, before you can say a calling program. This calculate is calling power and factorial function, which are present before this calculate. So our program is starting here, has include. So we have power function, we have factorial function, then we have calculate function, then we have main program. That means all functions we are writing at the start. All functions we are writing at the start. So no need of a declaration. So main program is calling calculate, which is present before the main program. Calculate is calling power and factorial, which are present before the calculate. So here, declaration of function is not required. When we declare a function, if function is present after the calling program, the function call karna rahe, te function that a calling program cha nantar lila se, tar function declare karna karna se. Function that a calling program cha adhi lila se, tar declaration karai chi garas nahi. या केस मध्ये जे काही फंक्शन्स आपण कॉल करतो ते कॉलिंग प्रोग्रामच्या आधी आहेत सो हियर डिक्लेरेशन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड हे जर का कळालं असेल तुम्हाला तर आपण बघू फंक्शन आपण नंतर कसे लिहू शकतो आणि मग डिक्लेरेशन सेगमेंट आपल्याला काय करावे लागतो जस्ट चेक दिस
check whether you have any problem. Function call within function. The concept real life is the same as the real life. The real life is the same as the real life. The real life is the same as the real life. The real life is the same as the real life. The real life is the same as the real life. The real life is the same as the real life. Now I will wrap this all. Now, here we have, in short, I am writing here now, integer power integer x comma integer n and then return p integer factorial comma integer n Return F float calculate integer x comma integer n return answer and then void me. This is a simple structure of our previous program. From a main program, we are calling this calculate, and from calculate, we are calling power and factorial. Here, each and every function is present before the calling program. Each and every function is present before the calling program, so no problem. Now, we will discuss. main program first we have written main program first and then we have written power i am not writing detail program now power factorial and then float Calculate integer x comma integer n. Now in this case, our calculate is our calculate. Sorry, sorry. Main program is calling calculate and calculate. Is calling factorial and power. Now here, if you check the situation, your calculate is calling power and factorial function, which are present before this. They are already written, so no need of declaration. But if you check the main program, in main program we are calling calculate, which is written after the main program. So we have to declare calculate into the main. Otherwise, it will generate error for the calling statement. Now, if you need an answer equal to calculate x comma y, that statement to error. The function should have a prototype. So here we have to declare this as float calculate integer comma integer. Like this, we have to declare float calculate integer comma integer. So in this case, declaration of a calculation is required, but not power and factorial. Remember here, power and factorial, they are also present after the main program. But 
they don't have any relation with main program because this power and factorial we are calling from the calculate and calculate is called from a main program so main program is connected only with calculate calculate function it don't have any relation with power and factorial that's why in main program we have to declare only calculate this too we are not declaring here because we are not calling from here this function we are calling from calculate then why they are not declared in calculate because they are present before the calculate so this works no problem Now check here. One minute. Okay. Now in this third situation, main program is calling calculate. Main program is calling calculate, and calculate is calling these two functions. and in this case function is present after the calling program when function is present after the calling program declaration is must so here we have to declare this float calculate integer comma integer we don't mention here variable while declaring we don't mention the variable we mention only data type because variable can be anything Data type is must. We don't declare the variable. We mention only data type. Now here we are calling two functions, so we have to write this integer power integer comma integer, and then integer factorial, and then integer. Then what you have to do? So in main program, we are declaring only calculate. in calculate we are declaring power and factorial because we are calling this two. and then we have written power and factorial so if you are calling a function which is present after the calling program in that case in calling program we have to declare a function while declaring function what we have to write say mean the return type the name of the function and the number of parameters not parallel number of parameters the data type of each and every parameter only data type like here we have an integer and we have not written integer x comma integer n we have mentioned only the data type so that is called as the signature of a function the signature of a function contains name of a function return type and types of the parameters which it is receiving that is called as the signature and after declaration we have to give semicolon because this is the declaration of a statement we mean don't mention any variable in a declaration just check this if you have any doubts ask me clear the trial no ka problem any doubt okay just give me a minute to clear the board
Now, if you execute this program, first of all, your component starts with me. Can you remember? Integer b equal to 26. It will declare variable b for me and it assigns value 26. Print tab slash and go to the next time b is equal to percentage d. So this indicates b is equal to percentage d. Means you want to print one number. Which number? The number which is present in b. So it will check whether this b is present in main program. It is there. Its value is 26. So it will print 26. Show. It will go to execute show. Curly bracket a is equal to 10. So it will declare a for show. And it assigns value 10 to it. Then print tab slash l a is equal to. So it will give you a is equal to percentage d. Print one number. The number which is present in a. So it will check whether a is declared in show. Yes, it is declared in show. Its value is 10. So it will print 10. End of the function. It comes back to the calling program. And then it will give you b is equal to print value of b. We are accessing this into the main program. So it will check whether b is declared in main program. Yes, what is its value? 26. This is simple because both variables are different. Now, if I make this as b, like this. Now, if we execute the program again, it will declare b for me and it assigns value 26. b is equal to print value of b. Now, this statement is present in main program. So, it will check whether b is declared in main program. Yes, b is declared in main program. Its value is 26. So, it will print 26. Then, show. It will go to execute show. Again, integer b is equal to 10. So again b is declared for show and it gives value 10 to that. Then we print that statement b is equal to, so it will print b is equal to print value of b. Now this statement is present within function show. So it will check whether this b is declared for a show. Yes, b is declared for a show. So it gives value 10. End of the function, it comes back to the calling program. Again, b is equal to percentage b. b. So this indicate this statement we are using it to the main. So it will check whether B is there for a main. Yes, it is there for a main. So it prints 26. So this is called as a local variable for a function main or sorry, program main. And this is a B. This B is local for function show. We have one concept called as global. integer b. Now this b is declared before the function and after hash and queue. This is called as a global variable declaration. Now if we try to execute this program for of hash and queue integer b. So when this statement is executed in integer b, compiler declares b throughout the program for all the functions and main program. So I am using here all. B for all. Then it goes to the main. B is equal to 26. So it will check whether B is declared for a main. Now B is not declared for a main. So it will check whether B is declared for global for all. Yes, it is declared. So it assigns value 26. Then it comes here. Print F B is equal to percentage D. You want to print one number, which number? The number which is present in B. This print F we are using in a main program. So it will check whether B is declared in main program. Now B is not declared in main program. So it will check whether B is declared for all. Yes, B is declared for all. Its value is 26. So it will print 26. The variable which is declared as a global variable, that variable we can access into the any function or in any program. So this B that can be accessed over here, it prints 26. Show. Now it goes to execute show. Curly bracket B is equal to 10. So compiler will check whether B is declared in show. Now B is not declared in show. So it will check 
B is declared as a global. Yes, B is declared as a global whose value is 26. So it cancels this 26 and it gives value 10. Then B is equal to print value of B. So it will check whether B is declared in show. No, B is not declared in show. B is declared for a global for all. Yes, it is declared. What is value 10? So this will print 10. End of the function. It comes back to the calling program. I can print that B is equal to. So B is equal to percentage D. Print one number. Which number? The number which is present in B. So it will check whether B is declared for a main. No, B is not declared for a main. So it will check B is declared as a global. Yes, it is declared for a global. What is value? 10. So this will print 10. So this modified value, it comes into this function. This modified value comes into this main program. So this indicates the variable which we have declared as a global variable. The variable which we have declared as a global variable, value of that variable we can access anywhere. And if some program modifies that value, that modified value will be carried for remaining all the program because it is common through all the program that is called as the global variable clear concept of global variable any doubt Now, we will declare two variables. Now, we will work with two variables, A and B. Check this. Okay, now A as global, B as global. We have declared two variables as a global variables. So it will start from main program. A is equal to 10. So compare we will check 
whether A is declared in main program. A is not declared in main program, so it will check whether A is declared as a global variable. Yes, A is declared as a global variable, so it will do the global variable times value 10. Okay. Then B is equal to 26, so it will check. B is equal to 26, so it will check whether B is declared as a local variable. Now B is not declared as a local variable, so it will check whether it is declared as a global variable. Yes, it is declared as a global variable, so it assigns value 26. Then it comes here, so this will give A is equal to percentage D, print one number, which number? The number which is present in first variable, that is A, because it is a percentage D and this is the first variable. So it will check this statement is used in main program. Whether we have declared A in main program, no. Whether declared we have declared in global, yes, it is declared in global. What is the value of 10? So this will print 10. Then B is equal to, on the same line, B is equal to percentage D, print one number, which number? The number which is present in B. Now this statement is used in main program. So it will check B is declared in main, no. It is declared in global, yes. What is the value? 26. Review 26. Then show. It goes to execute show. Curly bracket. Integer b is equal to 10. So it will declare b for your function show. It declares variable b for your function show and it assigns value 10 to it. It assigns value 10 to it. It assigns value 10 to it. Then a is equal to 14. So it will check. Whether A is declared in a show function? No, it is not declared in show function. Whether A is declared in a global variable? Yes, it is declared in global variable. To that global variable, it assigns value 14. So this A cancel, it assigns value 14. Then printf slash A is equal to. So A is equal to print value of A. So it will check whether A is declared in show? No, A is not declared in show. It is declared as a global? Yes, it is declared as a global. Just a minute. It is declared as a global. Yes. What is the value of global variable? 14. So this will print 14. And then B is equal to percentage D print value of B. Let me check whether B is declared in show. Yes, B is declared in show. What is its value? 10. So this will print 10. Because now B is declared in show. End of the function, it comes back to the calling program. Then again print that A is equal to. So this is A is equal to print value of A. A is declared in main program. No, it is not declared in main program. It is declared as a global variable. Yes, it is declared as a global variable. What is its value? 14. So this will print 14. And then B is equal to print value of B. B is declared for main. No. It is declared as a global, yes. What is its value? 26. So this will be 26. So same variable we can declare as a local variable and same variable we can declare as a global variable. If local variable is declared, your compiler gives highest priority to the local variable and it will treat separate variable, it won't interfere with your global variable. And if local variable is not declared, it checks for the global variable. So same variable we can use as a local variable. Now it depends upon your requirement. It depends upon your programming requirement. What is the requirement of the coding? But in normal life, we never go to declare global variable. Normal life, we have global variable. We declare global variable. Variable declared kela global variable. The jo parent tumsa program execution mode madhya hai. To parienta kela memory allocation hoga. Ane aaj kada kada me programming magita object oriented programming concept magita. Kya case madhi? Apan generally ja vela lagel that's vela variable declare kar. Kya apni variable declare kar? Nahi global variable declare kar? Nahi. Karan global variable la ja apni global variable declare kar to. जब आप प्रोग्राम एक्सीक्यूशन करो तो त्याग वेरिएबला एट द स्टार्ट ओनली त्याग वेरिएबला मेमोरी आलोकित के लिए जाते हैं अनेक जो परिणत प्रोग्राम एक्सीक्यूशन में दिया आ ही 
तोपर्यंत त्याला मेमरी त्याचीच अलोकेट केली जाते लोकल व्हेरिएबल तसं होत नाही लोकल व्हेरिएबल तसं होत नाही ज्या वेळेला फंक्शन एक्झिक्युट होतो त्यावेळेला मेमरी अलोकेट केली जाते आणि ज्या वेळेला फंक्शन एक्झिक्युशन कम्प्लीट होईल त्यावेळेला जी काही मेमरी अलोकेट केली असेल ती मेमरी कॅन्सल होईल त्यावेळेस प्रॉपर युटिलायझेशन आपण मेमरी केलं जाते त्यामुळे दुसरा कोणताही पर्याय नसेल त्याच वेळेला आपण व्हेरिएबल ग्लोबल डिक्लेअर करतो अदरवाईज वी नेवर गो टू डिक्लेअर अ ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल बिकॉज नाव डेज इफ यू गो फॉर अ जावा यू गो फॉर अ पायथन ऑर पी एच पी ऑर युअर डॉट नेट देर इज अ स्पेशल प्रोग्राम कॉल एज अ गार्बेज कलेक्शन गार्बेज कलेक्शन म्हणून एक प्रोग्राम आहे ज्या वेळेला तुमचा सीपीओ आयडियल असेल त्या वेळेला गार्बेज कलेक्शन हा आपण जी काही मेमरी आपल्या प्रोग्रामवर अलोकेट केलेली आहे ती सर्व चेक करतो आणि त्यातले जे काही व्हेरिएबल्स किंवा जे काही ऑब्जेक्ट हे आउट ऑफ स्कोप केलेले आहेत त्यांची मेमरी तो ॲज अ फ्री मेमरी स्पेस अलोकेट केली जाते सेकंड याच्या मुलग्यांना हे करणार नाही मला माहित नाही त्यांना मेमरी मॅनेजमेंट हा कन्सेप्ट झालेला आहे की नाही परंतु ऍटलिस्ट थर्ड इयर आणि फायव्ह इयरच्या मुलांना हे करायला हरकत नाही की मेमरी मॅनेजमेंटमध्ये फ्री मेमरी ब्लॉक ऑक्युपाईड मेमरी ब्लॉक असतो आणि त्याच्या सेपरेट टेबल मेंटेन केलं जातं कुठली मेमरी फ्री आहे कुठली मेमरी ऑक्युपाईड आहे आणि जेवढी मेमरी जास्त ऑक्युपाय करेल तेवढा प्रोग्राम हा स्लो एक्झिक्युशन होतो कारण मग त्याला पेज सर्फिंग वगैरे करावं लागते जेवढी काही फ्री मेमरी स्पेस आहे ती त्याचा पार्ट बाय पार्ट सर्व ठिकाणी डिवाईड केली असेल आणि त्याला जास्त मेमरी लागणार असेल तर मग ते फ्री मेमरी स्पेस जी एकत्र फेड जर केली जाते त्याला टाईम वगैरे जातो त्यामुळे आजकाल गार्बेज कलेक्शन हा प्रोग्राम आहे की जो ऑटोमॅटिकली रन केला जातो तुमच्या कंपनीकडून किंवा युअर तुमच्या व्हर्च्युअल मशीनकडून आणि जे काही व्हेरिएबल्स आणि जे काही ऑब्जेक्ट आउट ऑफ स्कोप केलेले आहेत ते कलेक्शन करून तो फ्री मेमरी स्पेस जातो त्यामुळे एक्झिक्युशन हे प्रॉपर होतं त्यामुळे रिअल लाईफ कोडिंग करताना किंवा ज्याला तुम्ही रिअल लाईफमध्ये जात त्याला चेक करा ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल हे नाईन्टी नाईन पॉईंट नाईन टेन कधी युज केले जात नाही एव्हरीबडी गोज फॉर अ ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल ठीक आहे किंवा जरी ग्लोबल ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल डिक्लेअर केला तर त्याला मेमरी अलोकेट केली जात नाही आता काय होतं आपल्या प्रोग्राममध्ये ज्याला व्हेरिएबल डिक्लेअर होतो जे ज्याला कंपाईन केलं त्याला मेमरी अलोकेट केली जाते सी मध्ये परंतु ऑब्जेक्ट कॅन्सल जे काय जावा असेल किंवा रॉटनेट असेल किंवा पायथन वगैरे असेल त्याला आपण हवे त्याला मेमरी अलोकेट करू शकतो हवे त्याला मेमरी आपण त्याच्याकडून काढून घेऊ शकतो ठीक आहे ते मोबाईल ऍप्लिकेशन डेव्हलप करू शकतो आपण फक्त ऑब्जेक्ट डिक्लेअर करू शकतो त्याला मेमरी अलोकेट करत नाही पण ज्याला लागेल त्याला आपण मेमरी अलोकेशन करू शकतो इन दॅट केस वी कॅन डिक्लेअर अ ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल नो प्रॉब्लेम दॅट इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज इन ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड वी कॅन असाईन अ मेमरी अँड वी कॅन रिट्राईव द मेमरी ऍज पर द रिक्वायरमेंट दिस केस इज नॉट अ व्हेरी प्रोसिजर ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रॅम लाईक दॅट इज बेसिक फोर टॉन पास क्लाइंट को गुड सो जनरली वी नेवर गो फॉर अ ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल बट वी हॅव द कन्सेप्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल व्हेरिएबल सो जस्ट टू टेल यू व्हॉट इज द कन्सेप्ट आय हॅव टेकन दिस एक्झाम and this completes not completed but one more topic is remaining that is recursion that we will take some other day but this is about normal function passing value and the most important thing is passing value and returning value which is you need throughout your life so tomorrow we will start with new topic called as a array any doubt in this local and global variable topic ठीक ओके सो टुमॉरो वी विल स्टार्ट विथ एरे टॉपिक थँक्यू थँक्यू व्हेरी मच